Hello folks and welcome back to So What If I Say It or welcome if you're new. My name is Jess, this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related and I am back. I had a little unscheduled break, well scheduled slash unscheduled break on YouTube uh, because March is such a busy month with So You Like Rendo and I really was sort of here, there and everywhere this year and like sort of very... I, I put a lot out in March, um, so I needed a few weeks to recover, to be honest. Um, and we were up in the north of Scotland, so vlogging and sewing wasn't a possibility. We are moving house, so again, minimal sewing, although some today, which I'm going to tell you about. Um, and we're moving house as well, and I'm losing my sewing room. So again, more on that in another video. So today I thought I would tell you, and slash tell myself, what my spring sewing plans are. So my spring, summer, now it's starting to get a little bit warmer um what some of my plans are now there are definitely going to be some of you who are watching going why are you making plans because you have no room to sew and totally fair I've also had a few people go you don't need plans you're doing too much um also fair but I need them because I need instead of looking at unpacking the new house and my sewing room and all and all that kind of stuff as a big like scary thing that's oh god it has to be done if I have two or three projects I know I want to do, it's gonna make that process easier. Plus, I can hopefully get them cut out before we move so that I can pick up a project bag and just do some sewing, whether or not my desk is set up, whether or not like any, you know, I can sew on the kitchen table if I have to, um, but having those projects pre-prepared and I'm gonna put the threads in the bags and all that kind of stuff is gonna really help me get into sewing again particularly in the new place so what have I been thinking about so first of all actually there's another video coming and I want to well actually I want to know if you guys want this as a video so where have I been I've been up in the north of Scotland with my family for a week here I am by the sea um it was beautiful and really nice to just get away for a week but while we were up there my sisters and I helped clear out our parents loft because when they moved up to Orkney none of us were home to pack up the house like we were all it was quite a quick move um so one of my sisters helped but like it means the contents of our old house was literally just shoved in a shipping container and then put up to Orkney boxes and boxes of clothes and books and all sorts of stuff that we just needed to sort through but also my first ever dressmaking project which I got halfway through and then I went to uni um, like I'd made other stuff, but my first proper, like it was like a Vogue pattern and a dress and it's really beautiful. I uh, it's like this really thick red, um, is it crepe de chine? I think it was, it was a crepe anyway. Um, and it's so beautiful. And then it kind of went missing in the house movement. I was like, ah, oh. but we found it. It's still full of pins as well. Still like sections pinned together and all sorts of stuff. So would it be of interest if after 10 years I do a little video where I actually finish that dress, would that be would that be of interest? Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a little video. And also maybe we can have a look at what I sewed before, look at the quality of it, see if I can unpick anything and do it better. Like, I think that'd be quite fun, but let me know if you'd like to see that as a video, because uh, I can get it, I've, I'm shipping everything down from home once we've moved and settled in the space. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna see that, let me know. But it also meant it gave me a bit of time to think about what I've been sewing, what I want to sew, and again, what I feel is missing in my wardrobe. So there's a little stack next to me I'm going to talk through, um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about sort of what I've got coming up. And you can let me know in the comments what you want to see sew alongs for. So in traditional Sew What If I Sew fashion, the first thing, ideally I'm going to be wearing tomorrow, but it's currently just a lot of fabric. So... The plan is, this is a stunning cotton lawn. It's like so soft, such good quality from Flourishers, I think. I'll link it below. Um, and it's so pretty, honestly, like I love it so much. And I saw it on the Instagram and I literally was like, I have to buy this. And I bought it back in February. And I think I have two meters. Pretty sure I have two meters. Is it only a meter and a half? Um, anyway, we'll figure that out. And the plan is, I'm going to try and squeeze a Nina Lee caramel jumpsuit out of it. 
but a couple of things will be different. So the pocket bags will be made from a different fabric so I can maximise the amount of fabric needed. I'm also going to make a different view. So previously, this is my silver Alina Lee that I wear and I put elastic in it and I use the over like the scoop neck version. But there is another view, which I'm going to put on the screen now. And that is the straight across version with the lift straps. And I thought that would actually look really cute in this, like really, really sweet. And also I think I can get it out of a meter and a half because A, that requires less fabric because it doesn't have the up and over and the, you know, the, like it's, it's a smaller pattern piece. But also, crucially, um, the Nina Lee jumpsuit is drafted for someone who's about five inches taller than me. So I can take that off the leg because the crotch still fits and all that kind of stuff. It's literally just leg length. Um, I just seem to have shorter legs than their block because yeah, like it all fits my torso and everything. Um, so I'm just gonna take five inches off each leg and then that should enable us to get it out of this fabric. Um, I'm really excited. I really want to use this fabric. I want to be wearing it. And I think I like a really cool floaty jumpsuit in this with an invisible zip and I'm gonna turn you this way a little bit. All my zips are currently pinned to my mannequin so that I can find them because I kept, I kept losing my zips so they're all there. Um, I have a long lilac coloured invisible zip, which is perfect. Sorry, my running hat is there because I got soaked on a run the other day. Um, so please ignore my background. Because I'm moving house, all of my art is off the wall. Um, you can't see, but I'm sat over here because I physically can't get my chair over there because of the boxes. <laughs> so bear with guys, a little bit make do and mend today. Um, but that is my first plan. And ideally, if all goes well, I'm gonna cut it out just after I film this. Um, the Nina Lee Carmel jumpsuit is a very easy make. So I think I can probably, I've set a two hour timer because in two hours I need to go for my run so that I'm back and showered in time to go for my driving lesson. Um, whole thing guys. Um, but really, really exciting. And I haven't told you the occasion. God, I'm really out of practice with vlogging guys, bear with. Um, I haven't told you what I'm gonna be wearing this to. So the reason I want this done for tomorrow is that it's my sister, well, my future sister-in-law's Hendy. So Adam and I are getting married this year and Adam's sister is also getting married this year. And um, she's getting married in May and it's around three weeks till their wedding, I think. Yeah, it's about three weeks till their wedding. Um, but I really fancied something bright because she wants to go like sort of summery, smart cash. And I just, most of my clothes are packed, but even then I didn't really have anything that's right. Um, so I thought the Nina Lee Carmel, long trousers help with the sort of variability of the weather, big pockets, great for a night out, um, but also it's bright enough to, you know, it, it represents I've made an effort, you know, which I think is really important um, because I'm very, very excited to have her as a sister-in-law um, and I'm really, uh, her handy's going to be great. She also doesn't know anything about it, so I'm really excited for that. Um, so that's the plan for today. A bit of I haven't sewn in about three weeks. So I want to dive back in head first, as is traditional, and just bang something out. Now, because I've already made this before as well, it feels like a safe bet. So we're just gonna crack on and we're gonna see how we go. Project two is the Xanthi skirt. Now it's all cut out, it's all ready to go. I need to buy the right length zip fly, which for some reason I'm finding to be a weird struggle. So we're going to do that this weekend. And then, oh, do you know what? I've got the denim fear. Sorry, she's yawning. Um, I've got the denim fear. I do. Because it's gorgeous and I really, really want to wear it. I'm just really scared. So it's all cut out. It's all ready. Everything like perfect project bag. I've even got the studs. I just need the zip. And then this will literally be a skirt in the bag. Um, and I need to make it, but I'm a bit worried about stuff like the embroidery across the back pockets and things like that, where I'm a bit like, I don't know, I just don't, I'm worried because I've not done it, realistically. I've just, I've just got the fear because I haven't been sewing a lot. And this in my head is like, oh, denim, difficult. Denim isn't difficult, denim is fine. It's just like anything else. You just have to reinforce it a bit more. So it's in the bag, it's ready. This is project two. And then project three, I'm really excited for that. Project three is my relaxing project. This is the project I have made twice, three times, three times. I've made this pattern three times. I could make this pattern with my eyes shut. And that is the Cosmic Call Pietra. I'm making another pair of the shorts because I love these shorts. They are the only pair of shorts in my life that really, 
I never, ever feel self-conscious in. You know, sometimes you wear a pair of shorts and you're on your period and you're a bit bloated and you go, well, I feel horrible, like, you know, my, I don't like how my legs look, I don't, you know, and the thing is, it's a very personal thing, but I think most of us have a garment that's similar. For me, it's always been shorts. Because I am curvy, I've always been a bit self-conscious of my thighs, but also I love wearing shorts because I like having my legs out and I get really hot in the summer, so I prefer it, they're practical, they have pockets, etc, etc. The closet corpy actors have never made me feel like that. Because they're a wider leg, I always, and that they're designed to be a wider leg, they're more comfortable. The pockets are enormous. I love the way it cinches my waist as well and like sits properly on my waist because I have a significant difference between my waist and hips. Sometimes shorts that sit on my hips, like they're a bit loose or they, you know, they just don't really work. Um, they're tight here, loose there. So these are like the perfect design for me. So that is the shorts design. And I made them in a light blue denim and I wear them constantly. But I thought it might be fun to have a lighter weight pair. Enter my stunning red linen. So last time I asked you guys, trousers or a dress? And lots of you said trousers and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make some trousers. And then I realized that actually I'd get more use out of linen shorts. And then if there's anything left, I'm gonna make a top so I can be a little bit cuddled, which would be really cute. All right, so that's the plan, but this is very much, I'm gonna get these cut out before we move. But because I have made this pattern three times, it's a really relaxing pattern for me because I, I know none of it's difficult. It all works. I've done a sew along for it, which I've linked below. Um, I've made every single view and it fits my body. I like the accents. I like the details. It's not just a pair of shorts. Like it's got this fun paneling. It's a really deep pocket. I like the line of it. So I'm really excited to have a little pair of red linen shorts because I can see them getting used a lot, which is also very important. Um, so yeah, that is my, my sort of relaxed project for the month and I'm really excited, but I'm going to leave that until we've moved and we'll cut it out before we move, but I, I want this to ID, sorry, that was the other pattern I was debating for, but no, definitely the Um, I'm going to cut it out, but I'm not going to sew it till we move because I think this would be a really nice, like first welcome project. So that's plan three. And then plan four came to me in a dream this morning. Um, so as you guys know, I bought this stunning fabric from Sony Sunshine. It's a white cotton, I want to say it's a voile, and it's got these incredible embroidered daisies on it. It's really, really beautiful. And the challenge has been, I want a lovely summer dress in this fabric, but I don't want to look like a maiden aunt or some kind of virginial sacrifice. So <laughs> I, that may be my concerns, but I feel like they are justified. Um, but I love this fabric and it occurred to me this morning I actually think the best thing I could do with this fabric is make a Tilly and the Buttons Mabel. Because think about it, it's got enough structure for the puff to work and the shearing to look really pretty. But also, I like the neckline, I know it fits me, and I just think it'd be much more like versatile. So let me know what you think, but I, my, I'm, I'm leaning towards a Tilly and the Buttons Tilly and the Buttons Mabel, this fabric just will not sit up, but it's such good quality and I think it'd just be a really, like, really good option. Like a slightly shorter one and then I could just fling it on and wear it with sandals. And it's white, but because of the embroidery, it's not like... I mean, I love a white dress, to be fair, in the summer. <laughs> it's just beautiful, I love it. But that is my plan for this fabric. So I have four plans. Um, these plans, I would imagine, will span probably... I mean, realistically, these plans are going to span eight, the rest of April and May because we have got next week. I have a little we're moving house um, and I have a little hospital procedure stuff as well. So next week's a pretty busy week. And then week after we're unpacking our new house and then going to Adam's sister's wedding. My God, that's close. And then. Oh, also, yeah, the week after that, also my big PhD deadline is as well. Oh my God, the next two weeks are really busy. So I'm going to make this jumpsuit today to wear to the Hendu tomorrow and then realistically probably the rest of this will get sewn in the new house. Um, but then May will be unpacking and settling and researching and writing for a conference I need to go to that I'm presenting at in June. And it's going to be busy because there's no such thing as a quiet time. So we sew when we can, but at least if I can get this stuff cut out before we move, then it's like ready projects for me that I can just dive into because that, that really is the preference. Um, so other stuff in my sewing life. First thing is 
I got a new pincushion, guys, and I'm in love with it. I love it so much. It's from So Eco Fabrics. She actually does kits, I think, so you can make your own as well. Um, but she sells these amazing pincushions. It is big, holding it next to my face for reference. Um, as lots of you know, I used to have a stunning Liberties pincushion that I loved and a very good friend of mine gave to me. Um, and then at some point, one day, I was using it, and then it just vanished. I never, so I'm going to be really interested to see if we find it when we're moving, when we're packing up everything in the house. But yeah, I mean, it, it just vanished and I was so upset and I didn't want to buy another one because I was like, no, like that's almost accepting. I'm not going to get that one back. But that was like t nearly two years ago, a year and a half ago. Um, and frankly, I was getting annoyed of sticking pins in my mannequin and then them falling off the magnets because there were too many pins. And so this is my new pin cushion. I am delighted with this. It is gorgeous. My other new sewing thing is I was uh, very, very kindly gifted, along with my podcast partner, Sam, um, some of the labels from Specky Seamstress to celebrate their new label collection. So here they are. They arrived and then I immediately went on holiday. So I actually haven't looked at them yet. Uh, the Specky Seamstress is run by the fabulous Laura. Um, well, that's her original account. And then she also has a business partner and they're both amazing. Um, and they do stunning bias binding. I have got some bias binding from them on my list to buy once we move to house, but I'm not allowed to spend any money right now um, because moving. Um, but their bias binding is stunning. So if you don't know about them, please go and check them out. But also they've started doing these amazing labels. So I'm going to very, very carefully, because I don't want to damage the packaging because the packaging is really cute. Hold on. There we go. Very gently those off yeah because i think that's really sweet i like that um there we go so we have two types of labels we have the three hearts uh my favorite make which i love love the hearts they also remind me a little bit of the lives in um, zelda breath of the wild if anyone plays it um which are really really cute so we have my new favorite make and then we have little sewing machines which i love i really love um, I'm not a fan normally of labels that are really big or really brash or really bright, um, particularly because they end up being really scratchy and annoying. But these are so soft and I really love that, like, they're quite little so I could, like, peek them into a seam and it'd be really cute. Oh my goodness, I'm going to put one in the seam of my um, Xanthi skirt in one of the pockets. That's what I'm going to do. Love that. Right, that's happening. Um, leave one of those out and stick it in the product bag. So that is another lovely sewing thing that um has happened and it's very very nice uh so what's coming up for me as well so i want to finish that dress when it gets sent down from home because that would be a really nice sort of full circle moment um i would like to uh well i need to plan the new sewing sort of nook because i am losing a sewing room we are downsizing um really to be honest it's a good thing we're downsizing because it means we can save for a house one day and like you know it's good but we need to make sure that like particularly this year i have a lot of wedding sewing to do as soon as we move i'm cutting out my first wedding dress 12 but i'll be honest i can't deal with that right now <laughs> i just can't it's too much like i'd rather just have it all in its constituent pieces and then as soon as we move that will be on the big floor in the new place i will cut out the first 12 of my wedding dress but i've decided my patterns so that's really good for my bridesmaids, I've decided what pattern I'm using for them. And actually, I have fabric swatches, if you guys are interested. Um, so I got some fabric swatches from Minerva, because they have a good range of velvets. My bridesmaids are all going to be different colours. I have got four bridesmaids, and they're all wearing different colours, and it's an autumn wedding. So currently, I got five colours, because I wasn't sure which type of orange I wanted. Like, sort of a... I think this one. I think that's really pretty. Um, so the plan is to do four Ali Olsen Highland wrap dresses um, in obviously varying sizes, lengths, etc. because they're all different heights. But I feel confident with that pattern. Like I feel like that's a that's a pattern that that I feel like I know how to make. It wasn't difficult to make. The metered corners are going to be a bit awkward in velvet, so we'll figure that out closer to the time. Um, but overall I'm quite happy. So I think I prefer this um this orange this rust colour to this one. This is a little dark, I think, a little bit too brown. That's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments though. So I think my four colours are probably going to be these four here. So we've got a nice burgundy, a sort of forest green, this lighter um, sort of, because I don't want it to be a full rust because actually it's to go with the dahlias 
Um, they were having in our flowers because Adam's grandpa used to grow beautiful dahlias and we wanted to include them, which you know, is really nice. And then we have the lovely sort of proper red. So we have a red and a burgundy, but actually that's sort of all the colours go really quite well together. The orange is looking a little bit bright on camera, but it look, it's a little dimmer in person. But I just thought those are the four colours. Adam's happy. We're having a call with a florist to we're having a call with a couple of florists actually next week which is really exciting and we're having a call with the celebrant tonight a legal wedding is booked for a time that you guys do not need to know but it's before our sort of wedding day so we've got our legal wedding is booked then and then we're so the way we're doing it is we're having our legal wedding in london just ask some two witnesses just to do the paperwork basically and then our actual wedding day it means we've got much more flexibility on the ceremony what we want to do all that kind of stuff um, and so we're finding a celebrant for that at the moment, which is really exciting. Oh my goodness. Oh, and the only other thing is just because lots of you have been following on me on my running journey. Um, and I wanted to say that at the very end of March, after Say Other Friend, it was all finished and all done. I did my first ever race. I did the Regents Park 5K with Run Through. Uh, they run, uh, they organise races all over London and it was a really friendly race. I really enjoyed it. And I got a new PB of, what was it? God, if you know, if you'd asked me this two weeks ago, I would have remembered. 3254, I want to say. I think it's 3254 or 45. Um, and that was because I was trying to get a new PB running, but I wasn't like trying to, I wasn't trying to overdo it. I was just like, oh, you know, see if I can get a PB. Now, the reason I have a two and a half minute PB is because as I was going round, for some reason, in my head, my PB, instead of being 34, in my head it was 32 and I was like oh it was like 32 50 so I was like oh you've got to go a bit faster and then towards the end I remembered that my PB was yeah it was like 34 or 32 or something but I was like oh my god I can be like two minutes faster because I now measure like my per kilometer pace um and it was actually do you know what I had so much fun Adam and Louisa who you will have uh, Louisa's jet setters on Instagram she's one of my friends um the two of them came out to support me as well which was really really nice because it's it, the thing is, for everyone else, it's like, oh, it's a 5k, it's fine. Or for a lot of people. But for me, that's my first ever, ever in my life running race. I've done school ones, but I was never allowed to sort of compete because I was severely asthmatic and um, it was just not a zone that was for me, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't, I wasn't really allowed to exist in that space. Um, so as an adult, it feels brilliant reclaiming it, to be honest. I'm loving it. And I'm delighted to say I will be taking part in a 10k in the summer in hopefully in York. We're just waiting to see if we can get the time off um, so that Adam could also meet my godparents, which would be nice. So depending on how long we're up there and everything, if you're around, please do say hi. I've got a list of people to see. Um, but I'm doing my first 10k in the summer, hopefully. Um, so I am training already. I'm just going to take the training up a notch because I was sort of lightly training for a 10k but now I have an actual sort of date in mind um we're gonna see how we go and train for that because it really does it's uh, it would it would be incredible to be able to do that It'd be really really cool it'd be such a milestone for me for my asthma like it would it would be mad so yeah that is what has been going on in my non sewing life is mainly running to be honest running writing writing some more writing uh, still writing because it's a PhD and you should never stop. Uh, lots of work and also today is my seven year anniversary with Adam which is really really lovely. So is it seven years? I think it is. Anyway it's our anniversary today so I'm going to spirit away, make this jumpsuit uh, for tomorrow and then Adam and I are going to have dinner tonight and then I am on the hen do with the bride tomorrow and he is on the stag do with the groom tomorrow so it should be quite good fun. Um, this video is going to come out to you after it's going to come out to you on sunday so that i have time to edit and actually frankly so i have time to sew today um so by the time you're seeing this and i'm all perky i probably will be quite delicate on sunday so give it a watch let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this vlog if you'd like seeing me back um it's always that weird thing where you take a little break from youtube where it feels weird coming back but it's so so lovely and i love vlogging on here so if you enjoyed this vlog, please let me know in the comments. Do subscribe if you haven't subscribed before and you'd like to hear more from me. Oh, and the final thing I want to do today actually is talk to you about my outfit. So my top is the Side Me Sewing 
um, Seren shirt with the lovely puff sleeves in this gorgeous viscose, which was gifted to me from Fabrics Galore. And then this cardigan is the full length uh, True Bias Marlowe in a fisherman's knit from a shop that no longer exists. So loving being a bit knee made today. So I'm going to go cut out my jumpsuit, sort that out, and then I'm going to go for my, oh, I've got an interval speed session today for running, so wish me luck. And um, I will let you guys know how my jumpsuit turns out. Till then, bye.